It is no cliche that if you work for a consulting firm, you will likely create lots of slides. And so in the six years I worked for the consulting firm McKinsey, I probably created really thousands of PowerPoint pages. And so in today's coffee break here on my channel, I want to share some additional tips on exactly the topic and specifically on the thing that arguably is both the most important part of slide writing, but also the most challenging part of slide writing in the life of anyone working in professional services. And this is creating charts and diagrams diagrams that first look professional and then also communicate your message in an effective and concise and to-the-point way. I'm very proud that this video is sponsored by Thinksell. Thinksell is a plugin for PowerPoint and Excel that is used by most of the large consulting firms and I probably use it literally every single day, but more about them in a moment. So the plan for this video is the following. First, I'm going to talk about chart formatting. So how to make sure that your charts really look professional. Second, I'm going to talk about chart selection. One of the most important things to get right is really to choose the right chart type for your data. I'm going to do this with some little exercises. So it's going to be very hands-on. And then last but not least, I'm going to talk about some typical errors that people employ when they work with charts, with data in creating slides. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about chart formatting. So let's look at this example of a chart. Let's just look at the formatting. So how this looks. What do you think? Is this chart looking professional? Should you make a chart that looks like this? And feel free to pause maybe for a moment and potentially think about how you could improve this. So take a couple of seconds if you like, and now I want to improve this chart together with you. And the first thing that likely comes to mind is all these colors in the chart. So should you really use that many different colors for all these different bars? And here the general idea is that there's nothing wrong with using colors in your chart. You should just make sure that colors have a meaning. Colors should convey a message, then you can use them. You shouldn't just use colors for the sake of making everything colorful. And so here for this chart, I would recommend you to rather use toned down colors, very basic colors, because I'd argue all these colors here don't really help you to bring across any message. If at all, it is distracting from what you want to show. And then maybe you can set an accent, a color accent on the latest year to stress that this is the newest number here in the time series, the latest figure that you maybe also want to focus on with your chart. The next thing that might come to mind is all these lines that you see here. It just looks very crowded, very busy, even though actually the numbers that you're trying to show here are quite basic and simple. So probably the first thing I want to take out are all these connector lines between the bars I'd argue they don't really add any value at all here in this chart. And the same thing is likely also true for all these helper lines, all these grid lines in the background. And here I'd argue what I'd take out is also the y-axis to the side. In this example, you already have all the numbers on top of the bars. Why do you need to show this additional axis? Take it out and you will be very fine. And now let's also look at the x-axis because it comes with a very bold, dominant, dark black that really dominates the whole picture. So I'd say it's not really helpful because of course you want rather the numbers, the bars to stand out and not this very bold x-axis. So let's lighten it up a little bit. And now what I would encourage you to add are rather some arrows, difference arrows, some elements that really help you to bring out the message that you want to bring out. And of course what exactly that is will depend on indeed the message that you do want to communicate, but maybe you want to show how the revenues increased from 2015 to 2021. Maybe this is what you would want to show. And if this is indeed the case, why don't include a difference arrow that shows how the revenue increased by 400% from 2015 to 2021. And then this will potentially be a number that you could also cite and refer to in the action title. So if you don't know what action titles are also a very important part of slide writing, I will link another video that I did on this very topic above here. So one key concept to have in mind here is the idea of the data to ink ratio. The idea is that this ratio should be as high as possible. So ideally you're able to show as much data as possible with as little ink as possible. And the implication of this is that you should just take out, delete all the additional filler lines, helper lines, background lines, axes and so on and so forth. Unless of course they're really needed and really add value to the message that you want to bring across. So always think data to ink ratio and this alone will already improve your charts, I promise. Next, let's talk about choosing the right chart type for the data that you want to visualize because this indeed is often more complicated than it might look. 
So let's start with this very simple exercise here. Here you see different products and how much revenue they contribute to the total revenue of a company. So the sum of them all is 100%. So what chart type would you choose to visualize this? And again, feel free to take a couple of seconds, maybe pause the video to think about this in detail. Now let's look at a couple of examples, because at least from my experience, the chart type that people will mention most frequently in this situation is a pie chart. So we should surely use a pie chart to visualize this, right? So here what you directly see in this example is that this pie chart looks quite messy, quite overcrowded. The basic rule of thumb is that whenever you have more than about five elements to show, pie charts are quite difficult to work with because the elements are just getting too small to really display them in a visually appealing way. But then also, at least if you read the literature on that, just interpreting the area of an element does not really seem to be too intuitive to the human mind. So is it really that clear to you that for instance product 9 is twice the share, twice the size of product 10? Or product 5 is twice the size of product 9? So these relative differences in area are not that natural to grasp and to understand. And often bar charts like this as shown here on the right might be a bit more of an intuitive way of also really comparing even relative numbers like this. And the key point that I want to make here is that at the beginning of visualizing data, always make it an effort of yours. So thinking about what the options might be and what really the best choice of a chart might be for that. And of course, some chart types just work better for some specific types of data than for others. So here, for instance, a couple of arch types. So component comparison, so relative comparison. Here, pie charts or stack column charts might work quite well. So for things of share of, percentage of, and so on. If it's more about an absolute comparison, then you maybe want to go for the vertical bar charts or the waterfall charts. For time series, of course, line charts or column charts might work. So if you really want to show how a certain time series develops over time, then of course there are distributions, correlations, and so on and so forth. I would actually encourage you to print out this specific slide and potentially keep it as a cheat sheet next to your desk. I will offer this slide as a PDF for you to be downloaded. There's a link to that in the video description. Feel free to just check it out. So now with that, knowledge in mind, let's look at another example of a data visualization. So this is a slightly more complicated data set. Here you see different numbers, marketing spend, unit price, volume sold for different products that are here. And the question is, which chart type would you choose to communicate that the marketing spend correlates with the unit price, but not with the volume? What chart type would you choose here? And again, Take a break, pause a couple of seconds, think about this for yourself. Maybe feel free to already download the sheet we talked about a second ago for you to look at and then decide which chart type you want to pick. And indeed, there are likely several ways of how to visualize this. One example here would be these bubble charts. So let's say bubble charts are always great when you have three number dimensions that you want to have in one chart. So here the x-axis has the marketing spend and the y-axis the unit price. And I think you can very well see the correlation. You could now also insert a trend line if you would want to really make Make that more salient. But then also you see in the size of the bubbles that the areas of these bubbles represent the volume sold. And here I think it's also pretty clear that there doesn't seem to be a clear correlation between the volume sold and the marketing mix. You see large bubbles both on the left and on the right side of the spectrum. So now if you wonder how you really create charts like this, because maybe you struggled a little bit with the built-in PowerPoint charts, I can very much understand you. The built-in PowerPoint charts are indeed often quite a hassle to work with, which is why a service like ThinkCell exists. So ThinkCell is a plugin for PowerPoint and Excel that really helps you to create beautiful looking charts and just improve your PowerPoint workflows in general. ThinkCell is the sponsor of today's video and all the charts you've seen so far and you will see also in the next minutes are created with ThinkCell. ThinkCell is not just any tool, it is the de facto standard for creating charts in PowerPoint. Most of the large consulting firms use it. It's also very popular in industry and in business school. It's a tool that I myself literally use almost every single day. You just need to install ThinkCell and then it integrates with PowerPoint as a plugin. You will see a little icon in the ribbon to access all the functionality or the formatting things that we did at the beginning of this video. This was all ThinkCell functionality. If you create charts with ThinkCell and send it to someone without ThinkCell, that person can also open it and look at it. And what's even better is that they can also edit the chart without having ThinkCell installed. So if you would like to try it out, ThinkCell agreed to an exclusive offer just for the 
from learning community. So if you access things there via the link in the video description that I will place there for you, you get access to an extended 60 day free trial. The trial is completely free, no hidden cost, no auto subscription, no credit card required. Just the best opportunity for you to try whether things still works great for you as well. And the best thing is that I negotiated a second goodie for you. So if after the trial you are interested to continue using ThingCell, you will now have access to a single license. So in the past you always needed to purchase a minimum of five licenses to use ThingCell. For you, if you use the link in the video description, this is not needed anymore. You can just purchase a single license. I trust this alone will make ThingCell much more affordable to you. And also if you are interested to join consulting in the future, getting familiar with ThingCell via the extended free trial is for sure a good idea because chances are high that your consulting firm will use ThingCell as well. And surely it's a great idea to be prepared. And so with all of this in mind, let's look at a third example of choosing the right chart type. So here you have the example of a P&L, so profit and loss statement of a company, one of the three key financial statements that companies need to produce. So let's imagine you would want to visualize this P&L in a chart. Which one would you like to choose? And here again, pause a moment, think about this. Maybe this is less trivial, less clear. Because indeed one chart type that is extensively used in consulting and that is very well suited also to visualize things like P&Ls are the waterfall charts. So what we have here is the data entry window of ThingCell. You can see that I already copied in all the numbers. The letter E stands for equals and ThingCell here can help you to automatically calculate totals and subtotals. So no need to do this manually anymore. ThingCell will do the calculations for you and provide you with the correct results. And also notice how you can stack waterfall segments just by writing the numbers under each other here in the column for the personal cost. And indeed this is the result. This is what the waterfall chart will look like. But now you're already seeing a problem and this is because all the numbers are entered in million, right? So the numbers are quite long. This is surely not how you would want them to look like. So what do you do now? Do you need to now go back to the data entry mask and change all the numbers or the Excel? By the way, you can also integrate things in Excel to automatically update charts like this. Well, of course not, because one of the many very handy things and functionalities is that just with a couple of clicks, you can really transpose all these numbers and for instance, round them to millions millions as I'm doing right here and just with a couple of clicks you have really the chart now exactly the way that you want it to look. So now last but not least let's look at some typical errors that people do when they create charts. And I think one of the main problems is if you just use the build in PowerPoint charts, so not use the ThingCell charts, then often these charts come already pre-configured with some problems. So all the charts you see right here are design templates that are suggested layouts, suggested designs within PowerPoint. So here you see charts with these glossy effects, with shadows, with 3D effects, with these weird shaded backgrounds. So now we could look into this in much more detail, but I hope that you agree just at the first look and feel that these charts don't really look professional. So let's just look here at this profitability surface chart, which again is one of the suggested templates by PowerPoint, how this looks. I mean, it's virtually impossible to get really any insight, any message out of this chart at all, just to distill any number out of it at all. So you should really avoid all layouts like this. I think we know extensively already talked about formatting. I wanna leave you with one last piece of advice because this is something that I often also see done wrongly. And this is in general trying to avoid having too many different charts, too many different messages on one slide. There's the basic rule of thumb, which says one message per slide. Really try to stick to one message per slide. This usually makes the whole storytelling much easier, helps you to create more to the point, nicely formatted, nicely layout pages. Several charts on one page can be okay, but only if you really need all these charts next to each other to really get the one message out that you want to share. Otherwise, rather split it up and show them on different pages. So now after I've shared all this advice, of course, I'd love to hear from you. Do you have any tips and suggestions for working with data, working with charts and PowerPoint that you'd like to share? Please just leave a comment in the comment section. Trust this would be insightful to all the other people reading the comments as well. If you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe and turn on the notification bell to stay up to date on all my content. Also, big thanks to all the members of From Learning for supporting the channel and a big shout out again to ThingCell for supporting this channel by sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try out ThingCell yourself, you can access it via the link in the video description. You will get access to an extended 
standard 60 day free trial and after the trial you have access to single licenses which is not the standard offering of ThingSale. So try out ThingSale and see for yourself whether it has that much of an impact on how you create slides as much as for sure has for me. Thanks to all of you. My name is Heinrich. I release weekly videos here on Firm Learning. Looking forward to talk to you again next week. Until then, all the best to you and bye bye.